Welcome once again to A Cup of Joe with, with Joe. Uh, today's topic is going to be the, the rain screen. And uh, simple concept, um, very elegant, um, goes back to 1946 um, from a Norwegian fellow. Who would have ever, ever thought that ex-Vikings we're not talking Minnesota ones, um, came up, would come up with something amazingly simple and elegant. And they got a little bit of help from the Canadians in this, but um, the Norwegians got there first. Uh, so the idea for a rain screen was to have a, a secondary line of protection for rainwater. Um, uh, the Norwegians and the Canadians um, uh, assumed that some amount of water was going to pass through the outer skin of the building and that some form of control of that water that passes through that outer skin uh, was, was necessary. The only strategy at the time was let's put more stuff behind the outside stuff and have that stuff absorb and store and dissipate the stuff from the outside stuff. Basically that was the concept of a of a mass wall. Uh, water would hit the surface of, of masonry or uh, brick or brick covered with stucco and the water would be absorbed and would enter. Um, what we found was that about you know one to ten percent of the water incident on a brick would pass through the first layer of brick. So you had a second layer of brick behind the first layer of brick then one to ten percent of the one to ten percent would pass through the second layer, and then if you had a third layer, the one to ten percent of the one to ten percent of the one to ten percent would pass through the third layer, and there really wasn't anything getting to the fourth layer. So you, know, you typically would have three or four layers of, of brick smooshed together. Uh, we call that a multi-wide wall, and the technology was absorption, storage, and redistribution. Um, it didn't always work. Um, one of the ways to reduce the water absorption in brick was to was to stucco it. So the original concept of stuccoing mass walls was to further reduce the water absorption. So it's kind of funny that stucco originally occurred or was originated as a water control means. Um, the reason that I'm smiling today is today is stucco cladding systems are the ones associated with the most problems. So, uh, you know, a thousand, two thousand years ago, stucco was put on buildings to keep the water from getting in, and today people assume that stucco causes problems. Um, all of the old castles in, 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 in Europe um, would have stucco on them. Um, White Castle, not the hamburger chain, but White Castle in, in Wales got its name because of the white stucco put on the, the stones. Now, the stucco is long since fallen off, so it looks rather dreary and, 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 and brown-like, but the castles used to be white in color because of you know, whitewash and the stucco to keep the rain out. Anyway, um, the Norwegians said, well, why not have a gap, a secondary line of protection before, be behind the first line? So the first line would be considered a, a screen, a rain screen. So you'd have an air gap that provided drainage and some ability for moisture redistribution. What an amazing breakthrough. So woohoo to the Norwegians. Um, Canadian, Canadians picked up on it, I, I guess, because they share a lot in common with Norway. It's a cold, disgusting, miserable place, both places. There are only two seasons in Canada and Norway this winter and last winter and water control was a big deal um, in hostile climates. Uh, plus they shared hockey. That, that's kind of, kind, of, kind of the deal. Um, the Canadians spent a lot of time trying to figure out how large of a gap was necessary to provide this drainage uh, screening capability. And it turns out that um, not very much. Um, you can have drainage in a cavity as small as two or three millimeters. That's uh, you know, three, 
three sixteenths of an inch, for example, is provides some some drainage. Uh, but that small gap doesn't provide airflow or air distribution. And if you can couple drainage with some airflow, you get quite a magnificent uh, degree of performance because you're basically providing drying. And sometimes walls get wet from the inside and they would like to dry to the outside. Well, it's hard to dry through something that doesn't dry very quickly or rapidly, such as a stucco layering or a stucco, a stucco layer or stucco uh, rendering on, on something. And so if the gap is increased in thickness to perhaps a quarter inch or three-eighths of an inch, and you provide some air circulation, ventilation, you now have drainage as well as back ventilation, and that allows the wall to dry from the inside out into this cavity and be ventilated outward. It also allows the rendering, in this case, for example, the stucco to dry into that cavity as well and be redistributed and vented to the outside. So you're getting both drying to the back side of your cladding and you're getting drying to the outside of the wall assembly behind your cladding. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite special, quite, quite spectacular. Now, um, we're done, right? No, <laughs> life, Mother Nature has got a vic vicious sense of humor. Sometimes these things, sometimes these things, that was uh, the person who sometimes I make stucco for. Um, sometimes these materials store and absorb water. We call them reservoir claddings. And stucco and, and, and brick um, are reservoir claddings. They get charged during a rain event. So they're, you have to view them like moisture capacitors that then discharge when they're hit with, for example, sun. And so we have this concern about inward moisture drive. So let's say that it rains on stucco or brick and the stucco or brick get wet. What are the odds? Well, of course they're going to get wet. That's kind of the deal. Then the sun comes out and elevates the temperature of the water in the brick. The water is going to be both driven inward as well as outward. The part that's evaporating to the outside, yay! <laughs> Two thumbs up, yay! So you want to not ever paint your stucco with something that's a vapor barrier because then it bubbles and blisters and that's your wall telling you you're an idiot. You picked a paint that wasn't permeable enough. The stuff that's driven inward, you have to worry about. Um, we don't want it to go very far inward because it might damage the stuff behind. And so one of the ways of stopping that is to put a condensing surface there, a vapor barrier, for example, to prevent inward vapor drive. But if you do that, you're preventing the ability to, for the assembly to dry to the, from the inside to the outside. So if you're going to have a vapor control layer to combat inward vapor drive, you want an air gap behind it. So you want to back ventilate that vapor control layer. And that's a pretty awesome strategy. So you uncouple, disconnect the reservoir cladding from the rest of the assembly with this vapor control layer, but you couple it with an air gap that controls hydrostatic pressure, provides drainage, as well as back ventilation. And that allows the wall assembly from the inside to dry into this space with the water dissipated to the outside. So that's kind of the state of the art of rain screen. Uh, but you know, more than a half a century after a pretty special smart Norwegian figured it out. So looking forward to talking to you again some other coffee time.